Well, hey, everybody, Mr. Reeves back with you again. And we have worked our way to Lesson 5.3, Applications of Percent. All right, we're going to start off this lesson by finding some percents of some numbers. We've done this previously, but this is a review just to freshen up our memories here. So here we go. To find a percent of a number, so let me write this out, to find a percent of a number. So you can see we're being asked in these first problems here to find 5% of 30, 0.4% of 100, 1% of 80. All right, there are two steps that we need to do. All right, first, we're going to change the percent to a decimal. Okay, so we're going to take that percent and we're going to change the percent to a decimal. And by the way, we do that by move by moving the decimal to places to the left, okay? So to change a percent to a decimal, move the decimal two places to the left. And then number two, we're going to multiply that decimal, multiply the decimal, D, let me see if I can get this right. Decimal would be D-E-C-I-M-A-L. Multiply the decimal by the number. Okay? So to find the percent of a number, to find the percent of a number, first change the percent to a decimal, and that happens by moving the decimal two places to the left, and second, multiply the decimal by the number. All right? And so for this first one, we have 5% of 30. We would take 5%, and that would become 0 0.05, and then we would multiply that by 30. All right? Uh, I'm going to skip this one just for a minute here. 1% would become 0 0.01, and we would multiply that by 80. 15% would become 0 0.15, and multiply by 70. So now you've got to be careful on this one because we have 0 0.04. So if you move that over two places, you actually get 0 0.004 times 100, okay? And then I am going to strongly recommend that you have a calculator available, and then it makes this process not bad at all. So I have 0 0.05, that's 5% of 30. I multiply those together, and I get 1%. Now keep in mind right here, this is 5% of $30, right? So what is this going to become in money? It's $1.50. Remember we've talked about this multiple times. When you have money, you need a dollar sign at the front and you need two decimal places. All right, so 0 0.04 times 100 is going to be, okay, let's go back to our calculator here, right? So if I go 0 0.004, that is, times 100, we get 0 0.4. But remember, for money, what would that be? For money, that would be 40 cents, right? 0 0.01 times 80. Again, if we go back to our calculator, we have 0 0.01 times 80. And when we do that, we get 0 0.8, which again, in money, would be what? 80 cents. All right. So 1% of $80 would be 80 cents. All righty. Let's go ahead and go back now to, let's see, 10% of, I'm doubting myself on that answer, 10% of $80 would be dividing by 10, and that would give us $8, right? So 1% of that would move the decimal over one more place, so 80 
sense, right? And if we if we take that and we multiply that by 100, that should get us back to our amount of 80. All right, just was doubting myself a little bit there. All right, it's always good when you get an answer to uh, ask yourself if that answer makes sense. That answer seemed a little bit small, but 1% is 1 one-hundredth, right? 1 one-hundredth of 80 would be 80 hundredths, 80 over 100. So, of course, that makes sense, Mr. Reeves. Why would you doubt yourself? All right, so an application here, uh, because that's what this is actually about, an application of percent finding the total cost. We're going to start with tax, all right? Uh, sales tax is something we're very familiar with here in the state of California. All right, it says Marcus buys a varsity jacket from a clothing store in Anaheim, which, of course, is in Southern California. The price of the jacket is $80, and the sales tax is 8%. What is the total cost of the jacket? All right, what is the total cost of the jacket? All right, so here we go. So let's take a look at some things we have here. We have the price is right here, right? So the price is $80, okay? And then right here we have the sales tax is eight percent all right so the sales tax to be paid or the sales tax owed is going to be eight percent of eighty dollars eight percent of eighty dollars so if we do what we were just doing all right, what I just showed you how to do, we're going to change that percent to a decimal. We're going to make it 0 0.08, and then we're going to multiply that by $80. So if we go to our handy-dandy calculator and we bring our calculator up, looks like I accidentally closed my calculator. That was not very smart of me. All right, we're going to be finding 8% of $80. So here we go, 0 0.08 times 80 and when I do that what do I get I get 6.4 but remember this is money right so that's going to be six dollars and 40 cents all right so if we want to know our total cost our total cost is going to be the price of the item right plus the sales tax our total cost is the price plus the sales tax so our price was eighty dollars and our sales tax was six dollars and forty cents right so our total price is going to be eighty six dollars and forty cents all right now i would like to quickly go back to a previous lesson we did all right, if the original price was P, right, then our total cost, remember we did this in the previous lesson where we used a variable, our total cost would be P plus 0.08P, right? Because this is our original price, and this right here is 8% of our price right but remember in that lesson we learned that we could combine these together and we could get 1.08 P so this right here the price plus the sales tax is actually equal to that part there that represents the price 1 plus the sales tax so if we went back to our handy dandy calculator all right and instead of adding the price plus the sales tax, we did 1.08 times the price. 1.08 times 80. Guess what we get? We get 86.4. 86.4. So the total cost is the price plus the sales tax. All right. But the total cost for this one. 
for any item p is going to be 1.08 p right if it were 10 percent it would be 1.10 p so do you see how the price plus the percent of the price is going to be one with the decimal and then the decimal version of the tax right there. So there's actually two ways to do it. You could do it this way, the price plus the sales tax, all right? Or you can do one plus the sales tax percent times the price, all right? All right, so let's go ahead and do another example right here. Actually, we're gonna do it right here. It says that Sharon wants to buy a shirt that costs twenty dollars. Okay, the sales tax is five percent. How much is the sales pat tax? What is the cost of her shirt? All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take that five percent and we're going to write it as a decimal. So when we write five percent as a decimal, we're going to get zero point zero five zero point zero five. All right. Then we're going to find 5% of $20, right? We're going to find 5% of $20. So we're going to do 0 0.05 because that's what it is as a decimal. And we're going to multiply it times 20. So I'm going to go back to my handy dandy calculator over here. And I'm going to go 0 0.05 because that's what 5% as as a decimal. I'm going to multiply it by 20. And when I do that, I get 1, right? Whoops. Sorry, looks like I'm accidentally pressing my eraser here. Let me try this again. 2, 0. And I get 1, but remember this is money, right? So that is $1 which makes sense because 5% is 1 20th and 20 divided by 20 is 1. So the tax is 1, right? So if we do our total cost, like we said, right? Our total cost is equal to the cost of the item, right? Plus the sales tax owed, right? So the cost of our item was $20. The sales tax that we owe was $1, so our total cost is $21, right? Okay, so that's that first method there, so the answer is $21. I just want to remind you also, you could do one point, in this case, 1.05 times the price, because one represents the original cost, in this case, 5%, so we could do 1.05 times 20 and again if we go to our handy dandy calculator remember see here we did 1.08 times 80 now we're going to do 1.05 times 20 and what do we get we get that 21 dollars so this way is just kind of a shortcut way Instead of finding 5% and then add it on, what we're really doing is we're finding 105% of the cost. We talked about this before, right? What is the cost of the item plus the sales tax? It's 105% for this problem. For the previous problem, it was 108%, right? 80 plus 8%, right? That would be 108% of 80. That's what we're finding, right? On this one, all right, this one, what are we finding? We're finding 105% of 20. So 105% would be 1.05. So for me, the easiest way to find the tax, instead of finding the tax and adding it on, is to multiply by 1 with that tax percent added on. But it's up to you the way that you do it. All right? Okay, one more thing in this video, and then we will stop this video, and I will add more in my next video. All right, simple interest. Okay, another application of percents is interest. When you put money in the bank, they pay you interest. Now, there's simple interest and there's compound interest. We're going to just talk about simple interest today because, well, frankly, it is more simple. All right, it says Terry deposits $200 into a bank account that earns 3% simple interest. How much is in the account after 
two years. All right, so we have an original amount, just like we did before, right? We have an original amount, which in this case is $200. Oh, we're running into that scroll bar there. Let me try this again. We have the original amount. of two hundred dollars okay we have a interest rate of three percent but then we also have a time and in this case the time is two years okay so when you go to find how much you're going to earn well there is a formula for it and it's right here okay it's the interest rate times the initial deposit that gives you the interest for one year and then you have to multiply that by the time okay so it's the interest rate times the initial deposit which we often call the principal times the time all right so, or a lot of times we say the principal times the rate times the time, or PRT. So if we go back here to what I had, all right, so interest, I'm going to say here total, sorry, total interest, total interest earned, we say is P times R times T. And again, that original amount, that original amount is our P. The interest rate is our R. And of course, the time is our T. All right, P times R times T. And remember, we're going to always change those percents to decimal. See right here, we've got 3% as a decimal. We're going to write that as a decimal. So my principal, my principal is $200. My rate is 3%, which is 0 0.03. Remember, we're going to move the decimal two places to the left. 3% is 0 0.03. And then the time for this one is two years. So again, I'm going to go to my handy-dandy calculator here. All right. And I'm going to go 200 times 0 0.03 times 2. And when I do that, I get 12. But remember, this is money, right? So that is $12. So that means if you deposit $200 into a bank account that earns 3% interest after two years, you will have earned... $12 in interest. So that's $12 earned. Now, sometimes they're going to ask you for the total money, all right? The total in the account after two years. The total in the account is going to equal the principal, which we said was the initial amount, right? Principal plus the interest earned. All right, so the principal was $200. The interest earned was $12. So after two years in the account, the total amount would be $212. Okay, so when you multiply the principal, again, that's the initial amount, times the rate, written as a decimal, times the time that you're earning that interest, that gives you how much money you earned. You have to add that on right you have to add that on to you have to add that on to the initial amount you have right all righty so let's see if we can do one more of those problems and then that will be it for this video all right so here we go it says arlene no arian excuse me not arlene that's an i not an l all right, borrows $400 on a four-year loan. So this time, instead of depositing money, they're borrowing money. All right, she is charged 5% simple interest. How much interest does she charge for four years? What is the total amount she has to pay back? Okay, so remember, the interest earned and 
in this case it's going to be the interest paid is going to be P times R times T. All right, so $400, that's our principal, all right? 5%, that's our rate, four years, that's our time, all right? So we're going to do 400 times, and remember, you have to change the percent to a decimal, 0 0.05, 5%, right? That's 5% as a decimal, times the time, which is four years. Principal times rate times time. P times R times T. All right, so here we go with my handy dandy calculator. 400, okay, times 0 0.05 times 4 gives me 80. So I get 80, but don't forget this is $80, okay? So, it says, first question, how much interest is she charged for 80? I'm sorry, how much interest is she charged for four years? So $80 is going to be the interest charged, okay? Okay, interest earned here, really, it's going to be the interest Charged would be a better way to say it because she's not earning this money. She's paying this money. Now, what is the total amount she has to pay back? All right. Well, the total amount she has to pay back is going to be the original amount, the amount borrowed, right? The amount borrowed plus the interest charged. The amount borrowed plus the interest charge is the amount she has to pay back. Well, how much did she borrow? She borrowed $400. How much interest is she going to be charged? $80. So how much is she going to have to pay back? $480. Okay? So in this first video on this lesson 5.2, Applications of Percent, we discussed how to find the percent of a number change the percent to a decimal and multiply it by the number all right we talked about how to find the sales tax right change the percent to a decimal right then multiply it that gives you the sales tax and if you want the total you add them together and finally we talked about simple interest the difference now with simple interest is you have the rate times the amount, but then you also have to multiply that times the time. All right, in our next video, we're going to look at a couple other examples of applications of percent. Thanks for watching. Till next time.